For every person that has had the experience of a narcissist being in their life, especially adult relationships, where you think, why did I attract that? Why did I put up with that? Why did I deal with that? And what is going on that I keep meeting one after another, after another, after another? For each person, there's going to be an individual story. For each person that experiences that, there's going to be something in you that is a core belief, that is a protective mechanism, that is a vulnerability that the narcissistic person is feeding off of, that the narcissist in your life is using to manipulate and control you. My name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you heal from narcissistic and toxic relationships in your life. You guys, if you need anything like coaching, group coaching, or peer support, please check out the info in the description of every video. Okay, stick with me here, you guys. So even if you haven't had a toxic upbringing, everyone in the world has vulnerable parts of themselves. Everyone has something in them that a narcissist can feed off of and use. It may not be something that is what we considered broken or injured or wounded in ourselves. It could be something vulnerable and light and trusting. Narcissists will use anything they can to get into your psyche and control the narrative in there as well as the narrative that surrounds them, okay? But let's specifically look at when you've had a toxic upbringing, when you have a lot of vulnerabilities revolving around things like abandonment, rejection, fear, being scapegoated, not being good enough, self-worth, self-loathing, those types of things, you name it, okay? When you've had any of that, inside of you, even with years of healing, even with thinking that, oh, I've got this nailed because on my own, I'm fine. All right. On my own, I'm great. When you get into relationship with another person, when a narcissist especially slips into your life, they are going to find that vulnerability in a split second. They're going to sense it in you. They're going to feel it. They're going to notice how it plays out in the way you speak, in the way you move, all of it. They have an innate radar for this type of thing because see, that is what they use in their entire life to manipulate and control everyone, okay? They are masters of controlling situations to suit their needs. Yeah, you're going to have certain vulnerabilities, certain things about yourself. That doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. That doesn't mean you're broken and it doesn't mean that you need to tolerate it from another toxic person. So let me step back a second. And one point I want to make here is you're not going to go through life never meeting another narcissist, okay? They're out there. There's plenty of people with narcissistic traits. Let's just stop labeling it for a second and saying there's a lot of selfish people in this world, okay? There really are. And there's a lot of people who are out for their own gain only. That's just how it is. You are going to come across them. They are going to be out there and some of them are going to try and get into your life. Do not fear, okay? What we need to learn is how to assess the situation, not allow ourselves to become completely emotionally involved to the point of enmeshment with another person that we do not know or trust yet, and how to step away from these situations using boundaries and understanding that we do not have to keep repeating the same cycle for our own life, okay? Once you recognize that you have things about you from your past or from your upbringing that create beliefs and core wounds or fears of rejection or abandonment or anything similar to that, okay? And you know that that's there in you. You can start watching for toxic people playing off of that, people feeding into that. Oftentimes when you meet a narcissistic person, especially romantically, they will pick up on these things quickly and they will start offering you comfort in the areas of your specific vulnerability and it will feel like a soul bond. It'll feel like you've met someone that really gets you. Does that make sense? They can pick it up just like we can pick it up. If you are a person with a high level of empathy, you will be able to pick up somebody else who has experienced trauma. You will feel it from them. You will notice it. You will feel their energy giving off something that says, I've been hurt, okay? They can sense the same thing. Remember that narcissistic people have cognitive empathy. They have the ability to be aware that the other person has been through something. They can sense it. I think of it more like radar. They have a radar for your weakness. They have a radar for your vulnerability and they have a radar for the points in you 
where you feel pain and hurt and they can manipulate them. At first, they will love bomb you, giving you everything you need. If you're a person who has had rejection and, and abandonment, they might give you the feeling of home or the feeling of comfort or the feeling of belonging for however long that particular narcissist chooses to love bomb. And that will be the very thing they start pulling away from you when the devaluing starts. You will notice that each narcissist might go from partner to partner and behave a little bit differently, still gaslighting, still manipulating, but not using the same exact words or the same exact manipulations on each person. Because what they're doing is they're, through their grooming and through the process, they're mirroring your pain back at you through the form of love bombing. Is that making sense? And when you start seeing this in someone and someone offering that much reassurance for something you've not even told them about, there is something to be watched there, okay? It could be innocent. They could just be a highly empathic person who's picking up something and trying to help the situation. A little codependent of them, but whatever, right? But sometimes that can be a red flag. Now, remember that a red flag doesn't mean I see a red flag, I need to run. A red flag means pay attention. Pay attention. When you have a sea of red flags, get the heck out of there because what's coming is more narcissistic abuse. Okay. Let me know if you relate to any of this. There's a lot to talk about here. I can make more videos on this topic and more videos on healing and recovering and understanding yourself as it relates to the narcissistic abuse you have lived through. Mm. And I always appreciate your comments and your questions that you place in the comment sections of these videos. So check out more videos on this channel for more information and more tips on healing.